Okay, and so we are currently looking at closing the achievement gap within mathematics. Um, <clears throat> Melissa is going to do, oh, I forgot. Melissa is going to do statement of the problem. So she's going to talk about that. She's going to talk about that. Okay. And I'm going to talk about purpose of the study. So, um, of course, in every classroom, you have a variety of students and the more academically advanced they are, the more they tend to be able to work independently successfully. However, of course, if you have a really low economic or a really low proficiency group, then you tend to pull them aside for a small group and more one on one type of instruction. But this is leaving behind a group of students kind of in the middle, the on the cusp students um, who are proficient enough to try to be left alone to work independently, but really tend to struggle through the material and not tend to be able to improve. Uh, their knowledge or their proficiency level because they're struggling at their seat while the teacher is busy with lower performing kids. So researcher one uh, teaches a third grade class of 25 students from multiple ethnicities and background. She began to recognize that she's unable to pull these on the cusp students aside and that they're the ones that are really getting left behind because the proficient students are doing fine at their seat while the super low achieving students are getting her individualized attention. Without more personalized intervention, however, these on the cusp students are not going to be able to see a big improvement in math. And so it was decided that she would start an on-campus uh, before school tutoring intervention specifically for on-the-cusp students to help them to be more successful. Uh, <coughs> so this way they have an opportunity to get more individualized assistance and the tutoring setup that they get to interact with their peers and be getting help from them, as well as one-on-one -on -one help from the educator. So being able to give them more individualized attention would hopefully help them to function better during direct instruction and also be able to have them sitting at their seat and being more successful during those times while they're working independently because they'd be increasing their proficiency level and understanding the material better. Uh, it's believed that in addition to raising their mathematics scores, of course, you're going to see a beneficial side effect that with more confidence and knowledge in math, that a behavioral, um, a positive behavioral increase would also be encountered. So perhaps more participation from those students, a building of confidence and motivation during math time instead of possibly having negative behaviors and acting out because they don't understand or they're lost or bored during math. Okay. Importance is Melissa. So she'll go through that. She's going to go through identification. She's going to go through desired outcome. She's going to go through the definitions of terms. Okay. I have the first five lit reviews. Okay, so even though No Child Left Behind is no longer in place, there's still goals in our system left over from that legislation. And one of the main things that No Child have Left Behind stressed was trying to close the achievement gap, get all students to the point where they're proficient and being successful with all curriculums. Uh, educational leaders therefore moved forward in their classrooms trying to create a focus on giving all students success and changing the learning process so that you're helping each of these groups of students to become more advanced and everybody reaching proficiency. Okay. <coughs> Um, because they started doing this and paying individualized attention to different groups, the teachers on the whole throughout education started noticing that um, 
the lowest performers obviously are going to need the most one-on-one -on -one interventions, whereas proficient and above proficiency students are okay on their own and can often work independently. But that you have this group that's in the middle that often were the ones actually getting left behind. The initial concern that it would be the lowest achievers, but really what ended up happening in reality is a lot of times it was these on the cusp, middle of the road achievers who could struggle at their desk independently but we're having problems on their own. So these students needed extra intervention to help them, and tutoring was an outlet of doing that. Uh, through <coughs> No Child Left Behind, even though it's no longer in effect, the policies that it brought about aiming achievement for all students and trying to close the achieving gap has endured, and we continuously try to make that gap between the highest and lowest performing students smaller and smaller, bringing success to all of the proficiency levels. Um, in one study that we looked at by Lee, Greg, and Dion, it talked about that if you struggled early on with mathematics in the elementary school years, that you tended to continue to underachieve and struggle more and more as the years went on. And as you progress through math, you would end up becoming less and less proficient uh, and never be able to catch up. So that achievement gap would actually increase more and more as the years progressed if you did not have an intervention for that group of students who started to struggle early. So students... It, it's really important, obviously, in today's culture and world, especially that students excel at math. And one of the reasons for that is that people who show strength in math throughout their K through 12 educational careers and well, you know, into college as well, um, they tend to be twice as likely to graduate college. Um, it helps to promote a more significant a future income from them on a yearly basis when they have a good grip of math. Um, additionally, is, so we started looking for a strategy that could bring all students betterment uh, in the classroom. And we really thought that tutoring was a way to go about this because if you're tutoring those on the cusp kids at a different time period than actually during class, then they're getting individualized attention and helping to raise their proficiency. While at the same time, the lowest kids are still getting individualized attention because you can pull them aside and do table group with them during the math period. And the higher end kids are even benefiting because then behavior throughout the rest of the class is going to be improved as people have more confidence and are staying focused on their task and not getting into trouble. Uh, tutoring, obviously, as any educator knows, is a staple of education. It's a popular form of instruction around the entire planet, not just in the United States. And there's been many studies showing the effectiveness of tutoring. Um, and why it's beneficial to the kids. Uh, anytime you give them extra opportunities to learn and display higher level thinking in a more <clears throat> small ratio of teacher to student, you're going to see them being able to have an increased abilities in any area you pursue tutoring in. Okay, then it is Melissa's turn. And Melissa will get through all of that. <clears throat> so ultimately considering kind of the purpose that we knew that we had and what we had learned from the lit review, we ultimately came up with two research questions that we wanted to keep in mind as Melissa endeavored um, on the tutoring piece of our thesis. And our first question was, in what ways would tutoring with front loading help to close the academic achievement gap in elementary school mathematics for on-the-cusp students. We wanted to really look and see what kind of difference tutoring is going to make for these on-the-cusp kids. And then our secondary question was, what effect would tutoring have on the class, on the student behavior and participation of on-the-cusp students in the classroom? We kind of 
theorized that if they have a better understanding of the mathematics, if they felt more confident, then behavior issues during the math period at school would possibly diminish or at least go down because a lot of times you get misbehaviors if someone's bored, not understanding, feeling lost, and then so they start acting out. So would classroom behavior and participation of these on the cusp students change as a result of them getting tutoring? <coughs> Methodology. Um, she is going to do the first four. One, two, three, four. I am doing the last one. Okay, so during the tutoring periods in the mornings, students always had opportunities to ask additional questions, get more clarification, um, you know, make sure that they're practicing the skills and concept that they need. Anything they had a misunderstanding about uh, or didn't understand in the first place could be clarified for them during this time. The reteaching sessions, in general, help them to better understand misconceptions they might have had about particular steps throughout the process or a vocabulary word or how to go about getting an answer to a problem. <coughs> through these conversations, the instructor is also able to, through each tutoring session, tailor, uh, tailor them more and more specifically to the students as she gathered more and more knowledge of the type of problems that were tripping them up, type of questions that she had, they had, and that sort of thing. Through the class discussions, work samples they were producing, and then their work in the class as well with tests and everything. Okay. Um, the actual method of learning during the tutoring session varied. There was teacher-led discussion. There was board examples. Uh, there was textbook review. There was worksheets that were used. There were multiple different types of activities, some whole class, some independent, some with a partner that you're pair sharing with. Uh, the use of manipulatives were used to help in counting and problem solving. And again, peer collaboration through everything. The way that it kind of broke down per tutoring period is for the first part of each tutoring session, you would be reviewing past problems from the unit that you'd already covered at that point. Students would do this a couple different ways through whiteboards or sometimes with paper and pencils. Sometimes they'd be able to use manipulatives depending on the type of the problem and where they were at as a whole as far as what Melissa thought their understanding level was. Um, once they go through the example problems and had enough time to try to solve them, they pair shared with their partner as Melissa walked around to kind of hear their reasoning and thinking behind their strategies to solve the problems. Uh, for the rest of the session, usually had about 20 minutes left, they were able to get a front loading of what was coming up that day. So they got to preview the lesson, uh, go over vocab terms, go over some key concepts, and just have kind of some background information in place for them, get to go over it one time before it was presented to the whole class. <coughs> um, giving them problems, uh, the... The reasoning behind giving them problems during the tutoring session is, you know, obviously to kind of see uh, how giving the students a problem to solve a lot of research to the students, what's, to see what students before receiving instruction. Giving the students a problem to solve a lot of research and wanted to see what students knew. before receiving instruction. Students were able to practice new strategies and skills through multiple problems similar to the problem seen within the lesson. Um, giving them some problems in the beginning allowed Melissa to be able to see what the students knew before receiving, you know, that would gear what the rest of the tutoring session was gonna look like and what they needed to concentrate on. Uh, they're also able to practice new strategies as they're seeing how their peers solved the problem or how they used the manipulatives um, in order to figure out the steps of the process to the problem. <coughs> and then build off of that with similar type of problems throughout the rest of the tutoring session. 